Welcome to part three of a new four-part course, How to Be More Productive. If you're looking to be more efficient, more organized, actualize your potential, bring an idea, a concept into fruition in the most powerful possible way, whether it's building a business plan, whether it's your own personal life, this course is for you. It is based on a centuries-old Kabbalistic model that teaches us how to create something from the vision all the way to the final product. So in part one, we covered the vision, which is the first step. In step two, in part two, we discussed outline. And now in part three, we will be discussing the shape, how to shape it in a beautiful manner. Please join me. Hi, this is Simon Jacobson, and we are now in part three of this new four-part course, How to Be More Productive. This program is dedicated by Jack Klundert, in memory of Anne Klundert. So in this part three, we're going to be dealing with step three in the Kabbalistic model. Just to refresh ourselves, in every structure... In anything you build, whether it's a physical building, whether it's the, a building of a marriage and a relationship, whether it's a business plan, anything you do, anything you create, writing, a piece of music, the most powerful way to actualize a concept is to make sure that you're following a four-step process that is particularly in that order. It all begins with vision a vision, a unified vision of what it is you want to achieve. But on the second step, you must take the vision and implement it. We all can have visions and dreams and ideas. So the next step is step two, which is implementation outline, creating an outline, a skeleton of the infrastructure of whatever it is that you're going to be building. Now, in this step three, of this course, we'll be addressing the next logical step, and that is shaping the outline. So we'll be addressing how you shape the details. You know, there's the expression, God is in the details. Some say the devil's in the details. But depending whether you look at the, to know whether something is good or something won't work, I guess those are the two expressions. So details matter. But details cannot be the beginning of a process. If you begin with the detail and move from the detail to the overall picture, something's wrong. You want to go from outline to details, from outline to shape, not from shape to outline. First, you want the general skeleton of the infrastructure that it is you're creating, and then you want to flesh it out. And all that is driven by the vision. So the eloquence of this is amazing. The vision informs all the steps, the outline begins to create the proper structure. And now, how do we shape that in a way that's aligned with the outline, which is aligned with the vision, but now is taking on shape and form? So if you recall, in the last part, part two, we talked about outline. So for example, let's say you're writing an outline of a, for an article or for a book. We know you don't begin writing every, de- every line, every word, First, you begin with the sections. And from the sections, you move to the chapters. And the chapters then break down further, subcategories and subcategories, sub-subcategories. That's an outline. So the outline is, now we have a skeleton. But, but why can't we stop right here? Because you still don't have a product. What you have is the vision and you have outline. Now you want to start filling it in. And here's the beautiful part of it. When the details and the shape follow the outline, they begin to really become exquisite. If they don't, they they can actually become 
a uh, chaotic to the point of actually undermining the entire project. That is why it's vital to go in this order. So once you have an outline, which is based on the vision, now you begin to spell out the details. And to do this, we need to be very meticulous. Very meticulous. When it comes to shape and form, the critical component here is that every piece, every component is measured exactly right. So, let's begin. A person has a vision of expressing a certain feeling and sentiment in writing or through music or art or poetry or any other form or fashion. That vision is amorphous and doesn't yet have any details in it. So the next step, of course, is to begin to create the main structure. But now you want that structure to begin to become detail-oriented. So I use the example of my own book, Toward a Meaningful Life, simply something that's close to me, and I learned on the job. So I'll, let, me, let me take that as an example. So there, if I, you recall, I wrote an outline. The outline was the sections of the book. They were personal, interpersonal. The next section was social, and the third was theological. Or another way of putting it, man... Society, God. Basically, three components in our lives where we interact with each other or our own, inter our own inner issues, which that can include everything from birth to childhood to education to uh, business to uh, health, anxiety, and so on. The social, which covers our social lives, responsibility, uh, science, women and men, and so on. And the third was more of our so-called spiritual lives. God, faith, unity, good and evil, redemption, miracles. So that's an outline. The outline obviously is driven by the title, in my case, the book Toward a Meaningful Life, that the entire book is meant to help people live a more meaningful life. But to live a meaningful life, you have to break down what the life is like. So now you have the chapters. But let's move now to shape. What does the shape look like? So then, each chapter, now we're focusing on, I'm just going to take one example, birth. What is the meaningful life aspect of birth? So we already have the vision part, which is the general concept of a meaningful life. The specific outline, the outline, rather the general outline, is that we're dealing now with this life cycles, and more specifically, birth. But now comes the question, birth. What do we know about birth, and how do we make our understanding birth in a, deep, in a deeper way that helps you appreciate its meaningful nature. So here, the details are vital. If you don't have the details spelled out, the promise was made, but someone starts reading, there's nothing to read. Or what's re being read is not presented in a, in, a con in a cohesive fashion. So I began that chapter with a quote. Birth is God saying, you matter. Quote that has become quite popular. Birth is God saying, you matter. That is an example of a particular line, a one line, which is already the shape of the chapter. It's not the outline of the chapter. It's, yes, it's a one-liner, like a headline, but then, now we need to make the case, to, 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 to the case that compels us to say that birth is God saying you matter. In other words, birth, your birth is essentially telling you that you are indispensable, and you have a unique contribution to make. And expressing that through anecdotes, through explanation, through stories, through analogies, is the shape and form of that particular chapter. It's just an example. The same example can be applied anywhere in life. So let's go, let's do the exa second example, building a structure. Building a home, a structure. So the vision is, you want to have a home that with your spouse, you're going to build a beautiful family. And the family will have a playroom, the bedrooms, obviously, the other rooms, but it'll also be a home that's filled with energy and good vibes. So you want it to be spacious, well-lighted, a nice view out the window. The vision of it is the, is the central component that you want a home that will reflect your soul, that will reflect your aspirations. That's a very general statement. That's the vision that drives the home. And the purpose of it is to, is to bring up a healthy family to influence and, and radiate light to all those that enter this home. Not just a shelter that protects you from the elements, but a vision behind the home. What is the outline? The outline is now you sit down with an architect, 
with a designer and you plan it. And what's the plan? The architect lays out, so okay, so how are we going to do this? How many rooms do you want? What kind of rooms? The size of the rooms. This is now all general outline of what the structure is going to look like, which will satisfy the vision. If you begin step two before step one, you're not going to have what you're looking for. Then comes, once you have that outline, then you say, okay, so let's now cover the living room. What do you want in this living room? So you'll say, this living room, as I see it, I want to have a few couches. I want to have some paintings on the wall. I want it to be lined with books. I want a piano in there. Now, why do you want these details? Because these details satisfy what the outline dictated, which satisfy what the vision dictated. That's the order. And the, this makes total sense. I mean, this everyone can figure out with common sense. But this is step three. The step three called Yitzira in the Hebrew word, in the Kabbalistic model. Yitzira means surah, in Hebrew means shape. Bria in step two meant the raw outline. It doesn't yet have the shape of details. And Yitzira, the step three, is about the details. But the details that are aligned to the outline, which is aligned with the vision. Now, you could say, well, what did you learn new? This seems to be very logical. Everybody understands this. Well, I'll show you where it can get more complicated. Let's talk about our personal lives. The vision that we have, for example, in our relationships. A relationship is an emotional experience with another person. I would say more than emotional. It's all-encompassing experience. You want to have a healthy relationship. Now, you can say, so how does, these, how does this four-step Kabbalistic model help us in relationships? Let me tell you, love, which is a key component in a good relationship, and a healthy relationship, a necessary component. So love, is it driven by a vision? Does it have an outline structure? Does it have details? Many of us just fall into love without any training, without any experience. And we come with our baggage. If we grew up in a loving home, beautiful. So we have modeling. We have something that we emulate. If we grew up in a dysfunctional home, that becomes usually our modus operandi. But when you use this model, you can actually evaluate how you love. Is love driven by a vision? And I'll put it perhaps in a different context. I've spoken many times about the idea that every relationship needs different elements of compatibility. So we talk about physical compatibility. We talk about emotional compatibility, intellectual compatibility, and then there's spiritual compatibility. Vision-oriented compatibility. Let me explain. Physical compatibility is two people are attracted to each other, physically, sexually. There's an attraction. That is obviously part of every relationship. Second Level two is emotional. You can be attracted to someone physically, but there's no emotional connection. There's no, there's no uh, chemistry. You, know, you can fall in love with a model in a magazine, and then if you meet that person, there's, nothing, there's no emotional stimulation. So an emotional relationship, compatibility, is a second level. The third level is intellectual compatibility. You can be emotionally attracted to someone, emotionally connected. You might have certain emotional chemistry. But the mind, the ideas, do you respect each other's ideas? Do you share ideas? Can you communicate and even learn from each other? So these three, as we shall see in a moment, correspond to three levels that we will be talking about. And then comes for level four. Level four we'll call visionary compatibility or spiritual compatibility, that you share a vision together. What kind of home do you want to build? What kind of mark do you want to make in the universe? As a couple, what synergy do you want to exude? That's the vision. Now, I went backwards just simply because most of us do that. We go backwards. We start, oh, I'm physically attracted to you. Let's go out on a date. And then do we work out whether we have emotional, intellectual, and vision? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. The truth is, it should begin the other way around. What is a soulmate? First, you have some vision of your own soul. Then you see another soul is compatible with me. And of course, you're then looking for the intellectual, the emotional, and the physical. If you only have step one, it may work for a while, but it's going to be very, uh, very weak because it doesn't have anything to stand on. And what happens if your spouse suddenly gets a little older and they're not that physically attractive and you see someone else that's more physically attractive? What you want in a healthy, loving relationship, what will happen, of course, is you may, your eyes may wander and you may not be that committed. 
The same thing with emotional and intellectual. Even they're more powerful because they're more internal, but they still are subjective and they go through changes. You know, sometimes you look for novelty. Someone that you know well, you get accustomed to. You don't feel emotionally stimulated. And the same thing with intellectual. But when there's a vision, the vision is what binds, bonds you that transcends the differences and the changes that happen in our lives in the intellectual, emotional, and biological or physical dimension. So when it comes to love, you want to have vision, which is that first step. Second step, you want to have outline, the general structure, which is the intellectual compatibility. So the first level called atzillus would be the vision of your love. The second would be called the structure of your love. But the outline, not the specific details. The outline is that we have general ideas that we share, general concepts, general values, which can be either vision or outline. But then comes step three, which we're addressing here, and that is the details. What is the shape and form of your relationship? How does it manifest on a daily basis? What does breakfast look like? Lunch? Dinner? What does a holiday look like? What about when you're at work? What do you do when there's a conflict? So outline is good for the overall structure which is necessary to maintain a healthy environment and a healthy relationship. But love comes down to details. How do you communicate with each other? Are you kind? Are you generous in the specifics? So if someone says, you know, I love you in general, we both love each other. Very often relationships fall apart and are compromised because the details are not being cared for. And people say, okay, you know, we love each other. We don't even have to work on it. No, the details matter. Details can come down to how you have a conversation, how you take a walk. So there suddenly you see, if you think about it that way, how many of our relationships are, are detail-driven, but the details are not driven by the outline, which is driven by the vision. The details just come our way, and what happens is, let's say there's a certain conflict, and there's no re resolution, because it does, it's, not, it's not been structured in the proper fashion. Many of us love, and we have good love inside of us, and our intentions are good. But no one ever trained us in the basics of spending time with another, how to say thank you, gratitude. How do you disagree in a civil way? How do you make up? So then we go by, uh, we wing it, based again by instincts, or based usually by what we saw in our childhood, in our formative years. So what I'm suggesting is just like when you write a book, you go from vision, outline, to details. And it's all in that order. The details are informed by the outline, which is informed by the vision. And the same thing with the building a building. You don't first get the bricklayers, or you don't first get an interior designer to discuss the details of the living room if you don't know what your general house wants to, is going to look like. And the general house you don't begin building until you know what the vision of your home is. But unfortunately, in our lives, most of us begin somewhere in the middle. We will be talking about step four, which is really the final product. Many of us actually begin with step four before we have three, two, and one in place. But we're talking now about three. Many of us have step three before we have two and one in place. It's like starting to write the details of chapters in a book without having an outline, without having a vision. Can you do it? Of course you can write lines, and later those lines can be put together, and you could build a vision from that. But... Sometimes you do it that way, but you're going to need, at some point, you're going to need that vision. You're going to need that cohesiveness, of that unifying element that connects all the details of your narrative, all the characters. So yes, many people write a book, they develop, it's centered around one character, one interesting, colorful character, and then you develop it from there outward, but you're going to have to then go back to the outline and to the vision, regardless. So, but if, if the detail informs the rest, it usually will not work well. Now, of course, there are exceptions and there are certain circumstances where a detail becomes a center component, but then the detail may be part of the vision. For example, if you're writing a biography and you're writing, a, so there may be one specific episode in that person's life that is the central theme of the book. So then that's the vision and that then informs the rest of it. So in a way, the detail becomes part of the vision. But I don't want to complicate matters. Let's bring it back to where we are now. So we're talking about the shape, the details. And the details matter. They really matter. Many people, especially dreamers and thinkers and big picture, bird's eye view people, 
put far more emphasis on the vision and not on the details. And the details is where we make or break it. The execution of the details. Even if you have a vision and an outline that's solid, we always need to have the capacity to flesh it out. And there are people actually that are very good at that. I mentioned that as well in previous, the previous parts of this course, that there are people who are good at giving you the general idea, the concept. They conceive well, but they don't flesh it out well. So this level of Yitzir is fleshing it out. And yes, this is more of the emotional dimension in a relationship, because it's the emotions that are detail-oriented. Even though the intellectual is a framework and, into, and the mind also has details, but its main focus there is, you know, we, like, our minds think alike, we're of like mind, we have certain ideas that we share, we think alike, etc. When it comes to emotions, emotions are, we're far more nuanced and we're far more diverse. People's emotions are very different from one another and reactions are stronger. So in this st- third step, it's vital that with the details be critical. Some people react one way, some people you say something to them, they're fine. Another person may be much more sensitive, and if you say the same thing, they become very defensive and very hurt. So we, we have to understand that. We have to be sensitive to it in the context of love. And I'm, I, so I use three examples. I use the book, my example from my book. I use the example of a structure, a building, and I use the example of a relationship. The truth is you can apply this to any given situation where you need these steps. So let's talk a little bit about more about the details. So I mentioned last in the last part, I mentioned that the expression that the Kabbalists use, they, they say darkness is shaped, I'm sorry, create, the, the second step creates darkness, which is still too vague, it's not defined. And Yetzer R is the Hebrew expression, and creating darkness and shaping light. So darkness, and darkness simply means it's still not defined in detail, is, is, a, is a general construct, structure, construct. And details require shape. When, some, when you shine the light on something, now you want the details. That's what light does. It's not shrouded in the general terms or shrouded in a, in a dark state. It's now specific. It's not a raw piece of clay or a raw piece of pottery or a raw piece of gold, but it's being shaped in the details. So when you create, let's say, an ornament... And you take a piece of raw, um, precious stone. It could be a raw diamond, a raw, raw gold, raw silver, copper, or whatever it may be. So that, of course, is vital because everything is going to be shaped within that substance. But what is the beauty and what is really going to be the thing that attracts someone is the shape and form. You turn it into a diamond ring, into a necklace, into a bracelet. These are details. This is step three. Now, obviously, step three is an outgrowth of step two because you can't shape a beautiful necklace of pearls if you don't have pearls. You can't create a beautiful uh, diamond ring if you don't have a raw, the diamond in the rough, the raw diamond. But the raw diamond is considered the second step. And the outline is considered once it's being shaped. And we see some people are excavators of the raw. And there are others that are excellent craftsmen who shape something into a beautiful ornament. And the same is true in writing a book. Writing, anyone that does writing knows, there's really two steps in writing. Well, three three steps. There's the vision, which we have addressed. Step number two is you need the raw outline. But there's another step before you get to the shape and form. You write the first draft. The first draft has many ideas in it. You can't say that it's been polished Step two is polishing the prose that now you get down to eliminate redundancies, make sure the flow is beautiful, paragraphs are structured nicely. So in good writing, that's what you do. The first thing is get your ideas on paper. A chapter that will end up being 10 pages may may begin by 80 pages. Redundancies and many overlap. Many times you write the same idea several different ways. Then comes step three, the Yetzirah step, is the shaping. A shaper is a very particular skill. You know, some writers actually do both together, but it's sometimes much easier that you write your draft, you get all your ideas out, but then someone else who is a, is a good editor and a polisher of prose turns it into that shining, uh, or, uh, shining and glowing diamond. So there's the diamond in the rough, 
in stage two, and stage three is that you've turned it into a beautiful element here. Now, we're going to be speaking about stage four, what that adds to the picture, but we're not there yet. So here, it's interesting. Here, the focus is on the fine-tuning it, and fine-tuning is critical. Let's use education as yet another example. Building an education. Educating our children, educating our students. So any good school, any good classroom, good teacher will have a vision. What are we going to accomplish students this year? Even broader vision, what are we going to accomplish through your, all your years of your schooling years until you graduate? So there's a vision of what we want to share, what we want those students to come away with as we prepare them for adulthood. So this can include how much knowledge you're going to share with them, a way of thinking, not just what to think, but how to think. It's going to include, hopefully, also a series of values, moral values, how to behave, etiquette. So it's both knowledge and also methodology and also character development. That's a vision. Now, the specific vision could be which school defines how they see the standards and so on. Now, that vision is very nice, but that vision right now is a concept. You turn the next thing is you turn, an, turn it into an outline. Okay, how are we going to live up to that? So an outline means we're going to need classes in character development. We're going to need classes in the different sciences, the physical, social, and political sciences, classes in different subjects to create that rounded out character, the individual that will grow. We need, um, I mentioned character development, we need science, we need also methodology. So those are general terms. That includes the outline, what will be studied in class in grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. But this is still not step three. Step three is getting the right teacher who will then take, let's say in grade one, we're going to establish the basics. You're going to learn ABC. You're going to learn basic principles. I'm just using it as an example. You can jump right away to grade eight or to grade 12 or whatever it may be. So each one, each class needs the proper teacher who will now fine tune. And this is where success and failure happens. Obviously, if you don't have a vision, you don't have an outline, you can fail just at, right before you get out of the gate. But the real success is going to be what happens in the implementation level, in the implementation of the shaping. How does the teacher communicate to the students? The teacher may have a great curriculum, have, may have great ideas, but maybe the teacher just doesn't have the, the instinct, doesn't know how to reach the students, is not motivating, is not inspiring, is not liked. The teacher may be too weak and the children take advantage. So now you're dealing with real details of that particular classroom. Now this is true also at home. The child at that stage, are they getting the details covered? So there we go, a whole focus, a whole study, just on shaping and forming something. And when that's not in place properly, as I said, you can have a great idea, a great outline, but the bottom line is missing. That is why it's so vital to have that, those details going. And details come, I'll give another example. You're going to make a presentation, a presentation for an investment, or a presentation to be, you're being, to, to be hired by somebody, or a presentation in school. So vision is what do you want to get across? What do you want the people to go away with? What is the overriding picture you want to convey? Outline is that you're going to lay it out now. I'm going to be presenting the next half hour. That half hour is going to consist of, let's say, 10 components of, of uh, three minutes each, adding up to 30 minutes. These are, this is the outline. And then comes, what are you going to say in each of those three minutes? The first three minutes, are you going to open with a humor? Are you going to open with a powerful hook? Next three minutes, you're going to get into the topic. Each of the minutes is calculated and detailed. I'm just using that again as an example. It could be five minutes. It could be ten minutes. It's not the three. The idea is that they all follow from one another. If a person is a very polished presenter, they may be able to convey something very clearly, but then someone will say, leave and say, one second, um, what, did, what was really the message here? There are people who have this gift of gab, and it sounds very logical when you hear them, but it's lacking vision. It's lacking some cohesive message here. Or the structure was not well presented. 
the details were presented well, but not in the right order. So you could see that how step three has to follow step one and two. And step three is absolutely necessary because if you have one and two well, and you say, you know, I'm going to outline now, in the next 30 minutes, we're going to cover 10 points or five points, just to make it a little simpler. And now you have to deliver on on your promise, on on your outline. You deliver by by defining exactly what it is that you want to communicate and not remain vague and not remain uh, no platitudes and not remain um, uh, abstract, but becomes concrete. So level three, Yitzira, Tzura, is giving shape and form to a raw concept, which in turn was informed by a overriding vision, unified vision. And that is a step three. In the Kabbalistic terminology, as I said, it's the world called Yitzira, after Bria. So one more point in the mystical dimension. So in the world of Bria, things begin to shape. And I, at vision doesn't have a shape in the tangible sense. Yes, it's a, the f- shape of the vision, what the vision is, but the tangibility of it, the concreteness is not there yet. In the world of Bria, in the second step, you have a what's called a, 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 uh, the beginnings of substance. But in step three, the substance is now being shaped in detail. So if you look at a fetus developing, and we spoke about that, the vision of that, of that newborn or that new conceived child is the soul of the child, what that soul is going to be like. The first steps, the first stages, the first trimester, or earlier probably, you only have is one cell that then splits into two cells, into four and eight and so on. In early stages, if you look at the fetus, it's tiny, and it's all concentrated in a Bria form. And it's an out- outline form. You begin to see the shapes after a while, but when does the child become a fully developed fetus? Is As it develops further, you start seeing. You see the head, then you see the arms and legs budding, and the other organs begin to develop. The, obviously, a viable life is only when you have step three. And then, of course, comes step four, which we will discuss next, the next part of this, the final part of this series, What is the final touch that creates a full-dimensional entity? So wherever you turn, you will find these stages. So in this third dimension, in the Kabbalistic language, what's happening is that existence is beginning to not just come into into being, it's coming into shape, into real specific shapes. But like in any given situation, the more defined and shaped it is, the more it can lose sight of its overall driving Vision and outline. That's why it's critical. That's step three. As a reality check, is always being, being evaluated and compared to and aligned with the step two and in turn step one. Because when you get lost in the details, you can sometimes get overwhelmed and lose sight of what is the goal in the first place. And you see this many times in companies and other situations where the mission is forgotten. Someone comes up with a great idea and, and the question was, should have been asked, how does that fulfill our general vision and mission? Does it fit our, our outline? And if it doesn't, where did it come from? Now, that doesn't mean you can't go back to the outline and review it and revisit it, but you want to be careful that a detail doesn't suddenly inform the overall picture, but the other way around. So there you have it, my friends. Part three, the idea of details, breaking down details. And here also would help is if you're able to, if you're creating, if you have this journal that we spoke about, where you take anything you want to build and you spelled out the vision, column two is the outline, column three is the shape, it's always good to review it with another person because another person can say, one second, I see the shape, but something's off. Maybe it's missing something, maybe it's too much, because shape also means not more than necessary, not, more than, not less than necessary. Like I explained with the chapter, when you write 90 pages, or in a film, making a film, most of the the film remains on the cutting floor. The editing can be only 5% of the original footage. So you want to make sure there's nothing extra and there's nothing missing. The perfect balance is in the shape. And having another person to help an objective person reading it or looking at it or depending what it is that you're building, reviewing it can help keep honest and making sure it's really being expressed, that the user experience 
is 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 uh, is being satisfied due to the, the details are properly there, and then there's making sure that the that the details are aligned with the with the outline, which in turn is aligned with the vision. So there we have part three of this four part series course called How to Be More Productive, and I look forward to seeing you at the next and final part, which will be part four, and that's called finalizing. Asiya, the step four, finalize. Be well. This has been Simon Jacobson of Meaningful Life Center. Please go to MeaningfulLife.com where you can find this program and many other programs, a robust schedule of activities and events online, COVID-friendly, in a way that addresses the concerns, the challenges, and all the issues that we deal with in our personal and and social and and collective lives. Please comment, share, feedback. We thrive on that. Meaningfullife.com and check us out. We're on all the different social media platforms and, um, and please let us all join together in creating the right synergy that follows vision, outline, shape, and the finalization of any given project or entity. Everyone be well, stay healthy. God bless you. This program is brought to you by the Meaningful Life Center. Please help us continue our programs. Make even a small contribution at MeaningfulLife.com donate.